Keep your head in the game, keep focus, and show us some amazing food. Getting to that level of excellence before anything else, it's an attitude. Your cooking really changed the world. Welcome to MasterChef Asia. I quit my job to join MasterChef Asia, so there's a lot on the line. Guys, if you need to run, you need to run faster. From across Asia, 15 contestants have 15 weeks to become the first ever winner of MasterChef Asia. This is like a battle for my life, a battle for my dreams. This competition will change my life. 30 seconds, you take the souffle and we go. That's the way it works. Follow their dreams and follow their destiny. This is the kind of dish who make me exciting about MasterChef Asia. To be the best, they have to impress the best. Our MasterChef Asia judges. I love it, I love it, I love it. I absolutely love it. MasterChef Australia finalist, caterer, and food entrepreneur, Audra Morris. The food that they cook for us, I really want to see who they are, where they come from, and where they want to go. Owner of fine restaurants from Singapore to Canada, the father of fusion, Susa Lee. I'm looking for great flavors, you know, great plating, techniques, and also the stories, the journey, I think is very important. And finally, Bruno Menar, the owner of three Michelin stars. Flair, passion, skill. I want to see the love of food. The technique you use are very advanced for this dish. The MasterChef Asia contestants will face challenges on a massive scale. Your first train needs to go up. Are you ready? Come on! Contestants will also cook for the region's culinary elite. Guys, your guests are hungry and waiting. Who will claim the ultimate prize? The first ever winner of MasterChef Asia! Chef Asia means a lot to me. I quit my job and prepare for the competition. It gives me goosebumps just to think of being on MasterChef. I think I can win this because I have a lot of knowledge when it comes to food. You're walking into a dream and then you pinch yourself, it's real. The equipment is fantastic. You know, we see very sharp knives. Okay. Ice cream makers, any kind of kitchen equipment that you can think of is there. And it's all pristine and brand new. The big M was there, you just go like, wow, okay, I'm here now.
three chefs who have done so much in their careers. The chef that I'm the most intimidated by and also the most excited to cook for is probably Chef Bruno Monat because he has had three Michelin stars and you really have to earn it by blood, sweat and, and tears. Audra was in MasterChef Australia. She got through with it and that's really inspiring to learn and she really motivates us. I'm so pleased to meet Chef Sousa. He's an amazing chef. I'm going to learn a lot of Asian fusion techniques from him. The biggest cooking competition in the world has finally arrived here in Singapore. We scout right across Asia. We met thousands of hopeful home cooks. What a melting pot of cultures we've got here in this kitchen today. Singapore. The Philippines. Vietnam, Indonesia, Taiwan, China, India, and Malaysia. Just be. Oh yes. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. It's a dream come true. I'll probably break out in tears any moment, but. You haven't even started your competition. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> so, what did you give up to be here today? Okay, the tears are coming. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I gave up time with my family, especially school holidays, you know. Okay. <laughs> Take a deep breath in. So, what's your dream? I would like to teach more people to cook at home and discovering new tastes, discovering new flavors. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, Josbia. You. Lina? Yes, Chef. You have a dream? I have a strange dream. I want to open a sandwich shop. I had to give up a job. I quit my job to join MasterChef Asia. You did? I you did, did yeah. quit your job? Yes. What was your job? I was working as an engineer. And you quit everything to be here today? Yes, Chef. Wow. That's very impressive. That's very impressive. So there's a lot on the line. Congratulations. Lika? Yes, Chef. <laughs> Welcome. Thank Welcome. You. You're coming from the Philippines? Yes, that's right. And you, you have a family? Yes, you... I have a son. I'm a single mother. So I left my son with um, my, my parents. And your son should be very, very proud of you. Yes, he's turning seven next week. All right. <laughs> Great. Very well, very well. Now, guys, you want to keep those aprons on for as long as you can, right through to the grand finals. The winner will not only bring pride and glory to your country, you will also take home a cash prize of 50,000 US dollars. Wow. Wow, that's a lot of money. I didn't expect that. When I signed up for this competition, I didn't even know that it's going to be a prize, like, you know, except for like this title. 10,000 US dollars worth of unique experiences in Singapore. <laughs> Household appliances from Panasonic worth 15,000 US dollars. A paid internship at one of Carlton Hotel Singapore's finest restaurants. A week stay at Hong Kong Disneyland. The publication of your very own cookbook. And the much coveted title of MasterChef Asia. I really want to win the title of MasterChef Asia and I'm going to give it everything I have. Of course I want to win MasterChef Asia. That's why I'm here. You want it. You're in for it. This is one of the things I want to do in my life. Bucket list. Winning MasterChef Asia validates all the hard work that I put into uh, my cooking. You know, guys, MasterChef isn't just a cooking competition. It will absolutely change your life. I mean, look at me. It's, I'm testament to that. It will actually open doors to realizing your culinary dream. Today, your very first challenge in the MasterChef kitchen is about to begin. We're actually going to judge you 
Yes, on absolutely everything like flavors, presentation, skills, but most of all, cook us at one dish that shows us who you are, your stories, where you come from. It's all about you in that one dish. So guys, you have full access to the pantry. You have 90 minutes. And your time starts now. There's so much produce in the pantry. I see so many fresh vegetables. There was so much to take in. My mind go blank. Kimchi, kimchi, where are you? I think it's always important for contestants to go in the pantry, keep an open mind, because if you go in there and you don't find the ingredients you want for some reason or other. Anyone see pork, shoulder? So I run into the pantry and I'm looking for pork shoulder, which is the main component of my dish. And I can't find it. I'm freaking out inside. This is what brings my dish entirely together. I'm planning to make a chocolate and citrus dessert. I'm looking for calamansi. And the only thing I see is lemons. Using lemons, it's not the same flavor profile. It's quite a bit of a risk. I'm going to be making a lobster and shrimp raviolo. Serve it with fresh mango and a little bit of salmon roll. I like to combine flavors and technique into one kind of cuisine, and I guess that's what makes me unique. I want to make my ravioli dough as quickly as possible. I want to let the dough rest for about 30 minutes. I run into the pantry. There are a lot of things that I can't find. Anyone see the spices? I'm starting to lose a lot of time. Coming back to my bench, I looked at the clock. I've already lost 15, 20 minutes just looking for equipment, looking for ingredients. So I immediately start on my dough. You know, this challenge is all about putting themselves in that one single dish, showing us who they are. They've got 90 minutes to do it. Susu, what are you looking for? I'm looking for, you know, the understanding about the product. The harmony between very, very spicy or it could be very, very soft. I'm cooking jaka hanu, which is white fish marinated in shrimp paste and some other ingredients. It's the dish that both me and my mom really love it. And every time I come home to visit her in Hanu, she makes it for me. So it's just like all the good memories come back. Everyone's mom is the best cook, right? But my mom is the best. I really enjoy standing next to her when she's cooking. I'm quite a uh, intuitive and I like to try to change a classic dish with my own twist and try to present it in a modern way. Filleting the fish, I actually never done that when I was with my mom. The knives are a bit too sharp and the fish skin is a bit too thin and I make some holes in there. The skin I want it to be nice and crispy. Uh, normally at home, I would use a baking tray and then a layer of parchment paper, a bit of oil. Hi, Leo. Hi, Hi Leo. How are you? I'm all right. You seem like you, uh, you've got a, a fair bit on there. What, can you tell us what you're cooking? Um, I'm doing a crispy snapper. Nice. Uh, with a nori jam, okay. mm -hmm. lemongrass beurre blanc, chard lettuce, and lime powder. Wow. What does that represent? Um, yourself or your country? Oh no, it represents me. I mean, I, I take um, many different techniques, I put them together with right. uh, flavours that don't often go together. Okay. I mean, they still complement each other. Yeah, I was right. going to say the lemongrass, you've got the nori going. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a lot going on there, right? Yeah, and it's all about balance. So what do we see today with your techniques that you're going to perform? Uh, well, we're going to see crispy fish. Crispy is the technique. My worry for the fish is that um, if I don't remove as much water as possible after the brine because the fish sits in the brine, that the skin may not crisp up. And that is a legitimate worry. 
If it's not crispy enough and you promise a crispy fish, that could be a problem. I'm so looking forward for that. So very blanc. I think you need butter. Yeah. And cream is in the fridge. Oh, it's in the fridge. Yeah. Just so you haven't got it yet. So you know time is uh, clicking. Yeah. So good, good luck. luck. Today I'm going to make a confit chicken with some fresh basil sauce and probably with um, sweet potato, mashed potato with it. I'm Sophia. I'm 30 years old. I'm a homemaker and a mother of two-year-old daughter. Being apart from your family is the most difficult part being in this competition. There's not a single day I've been away from my little one. I didn't get to say goodbye because she was crying. Like, she didn't let go of me. I want to show that, that my daughter that if you like something, go for it. My food dream is to have a small cafe in Malaysia where everyone who come will feel like they are eating home cooked meal. The crispy chicken is actually the key to my dish so that everything is balanced and not mushy. I've made this dish before at home and it took me close to an hour and a half. And because of this, I know that I'm very, very, very tight on time. I'm throwing them into two pans so that they reduce and, and cook down as quickly as possible. Because I know that I have to buy back some time I spend looking at the pantry, looking for equipment. Hi, I'm Susuli. I'm Bruno Mena. I'm Audra Morris, and you're watching MasterChef Asia on Lifetime. I'm really excited to see what they're going to cook for us today. The person that cooks us the best dish, they're going to win an advantage into the next challenge. The one that cooks the worst dish, they're going home. It's tough love. I'm planning to make a chocolate and citrus dessert. I'm trying to attempt at least 12 elements. There's a sponge, there's a chocolate ganache, pears, caramelized white chocolate, and a lot. 12 elements is plan A. Plan B is to just cook up as many things as I can and just plate whatever that comes up. I'm making pulled pork from the pork ribs. Hi, Jake. Hey, guys. Hey, Jake, how, how are you? I'm all right. I'm all right. All yeah. right. What have you got in here? I was expecting there to be pork shoulder, but there's none, so now I'm going for the rib. Pork ribs, OK. So what are the combination? And I'm doing that with the roasted red bell pepper sauce. Oh, I love it. Back when I was working for the bank, I would pack myself lunch every day. My coworkers would like to try it. It came to a point that I was actually cooking for 20 to 30 people every day. I was making them lunch, and just that feeling was so good to me. But to be here in MasterChef Asia, I quit my job in the bank. I want to be working for the high-class restaurants of the world. I, see I it, really want to see that passion on your plate. Thank, you, Thank you. I hope you see it. Hey, Jake. It's all about getting that right, nice enough so that it shreds yeah. apart and falls part of your mouth. Mm -hmm. So I'm really hoping you're going to have time to actually get that perfect. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm definitely worried about the choice of pork that I have. I've never made this dish this way. It's scary. The stakes are so high and I just don't want to mess up. So today I'm cooking mango shrikhan tart uh, with chocolate ganache and fresh berries. I want my pastry today to be nicely colored. I want it to be uh, in a good shape so that it can hold the mango and the yogurt cream that I have. And the last thing I want is for it to fall apart in the oven uh, when I'm cooking it. Priya. Hello. Hello, good afternoon. Priya. I see you're doing uh, some form of pastry. It's actually a mix of an Indian and a Western dessert. Oh. Have you got them sitting straight on the grill? They were and they've tilted. Okay. So, so think about next time, think about putting them on a tray. Yeah. So that it's easy for you to pull it in and out. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Good yeah. luck. Yeah, we'll, thank leave you. You, we'll leave you to it. Yeah. Thank you. I cannot believe this is happening to me now. This is not the first impression that I wanted to give the judges. Hi, ha. Hello. I see you got your Totoro. Yeah, Totoro. Tell us what you're cooking today. I'm cooking chaka. No. You got rice paper there. Are you going to use that? Yeah. I want to give it a little more modern twist in there. Sure. You want to hear about it now or you want to be surprised? I love surprises. Yeah, yeah I surprises. Can't wait. You'll get it. I can't wait. I have to say you are so composed and so focused and so calm. For real. All right. See you shortly. Later. Oh, no. 
How are you, Blanche? How are you feeling? Uh, no, it doesn't feel so great, but it's still good. So what are you doing? I'm what actually do chou à la crème. Chou à la crème. This is one of my husband's uh, favorite desserts. My husband is French. My mother-in-law taught me a lot of French cuisine. So since it's my signature dish, I'm 100% sure that the taste and the flavor is there. You missing something in here now? The on your piping? Um, I'm sort of going to just call it. Did you check next to your piping bag? Did you check if you have the right pipe to put into it? I'm sort of check, but you no. Know, before you put it into another black, yeah. in another bag, I wish I have a little bit more, maybe some citrus. Do okay. you think we should go now? Because you see, she's. I, uh, yes. yes, don't ask me questions. Just go. I need to change my piping bag. Do it your way. Something thinking outside of box. I do classic love, but okay, I'll, I'll, I'll think about that. Thank you. Can you help me to, can you help me to tear one piping bag? There you go. You want me to? It's okay. It's okay. Go, 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 go. I'm cooking chicken curry. This will tell the judges about my love for spice and curries. So it started off with my father. When he passed away, I sort of remember him through this curry. And it's a favorite with our family. The biggest sacrifice for joining this competition is leaving family behind. My children were so sweet. They were saying, Mommy, whether you lose or win, you're always our master chef. It's the first time I'm actually working against the clock. <laughs> so hopefully I can get something on a plate. Doing it under pressure, you want to make sure that it's going to represent you 100%. And if I burn the spices, I overcook the spices, or if there's too much of a certain spice, then I don't think I've done my job. I'm getting a really nice smell of spices. spices. I'm making a chicken curry yep. with uh, cumin rice. If I have extra time, I'll make some roti, but... Uh, Please do. I, will try. I love my roti. You're like the spice queen in this competition. The spice that goddess. You. The spice goddess. <laughs> Thank you. I like that. Where's your what chicken? Okay. I need to chop it yeah. and make it a little smaller so it'll cook faster. All right, we'll let you Good get enough. back to cooking. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, you've got a lot of pots on the go. Yeah, yeah, I'm making dessert today, so it's going to be chocolate with a little zing of citrus. Zing of citrus, I like the sound of that. Yeah, yeah. I learned cooking through my family. My mom is a really good cook. I think I'm very good with desserts and something that makes people think like, wow. My food dream is to one day open up a patisserie in KL where I make modern uh, desserts and modern cakes. Is this going to be a hot chocolate? The chocolate bits are going to be um, pastry, and then the cold bits are the ice cream and, right. uh, and the curd. Oh, so you're going to make ice cream too? Yeah, I'm going to make ice cream. Wow. Simple ice cream. You're really pushing yourself today, aren't you? I think I am. Yeah. I think I pushed myself a little bit too hard, but uh, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. The judges really think I'm pushing it, but that's, that's sort of who I am. It should be okay. I hope. To be in this competition, I'm sacrificing a lot of my time I want to push myself, I want to, I want to be the best, I want to impress. Guys, it smells amazing in this kitchen. But still 45 minutes to go. Keep it up, keep it up, let's go. Marcus, I think he has way too many things going on. You know what, plan A is definitely out of the question. The pots is just screaming right now because there's so much heat. So on to plan B. The most important thing that I have to plate up include the microwave sponge, the chocolate sand, the curd, the brulee, the ice cream, and the poached pears. I'm just worried about him because he has so many ideas, but he doesn't really focus. Do you know who I'm really excited about? Jess Beer. I love my spices, and she's doing a lot of who she is. It's so graceful. Yeah, Watching her cook is such like, calm. you know, anybody's mother in, exactly. in the kitchen. Exactly. But I'm worried about the timing for her. She haven't even started the chicken yet. And because yeah. making the rice, making the curry, you got to bring the flavors out. 
For the curry today, I will be using the whole leg and with 45 minutes, I have to cut it smaller. I have to extract as much flavour as I can. So I'm using the chicken with the skin on and I'm cutting through the bone to release more flavour. Lika, how are you? Hi, I'm good. It looks like you're making risotto. risotto. Yes. Oh. So you see her chin risotto. Oh, see her chin Wow. Oh, I love that. I love that. How are you going to do the finishing of your risotto? Do you uh, do a special butter with your uni? Do you put I the like uni directly uni inside? With, uni with milk, All which right. I blended. Oh, milk? Yes, milk. What and makes you decide to use milk and not cream? Um, because I still want the taste of the uni still there, uh -huh. you know, the texture. I, I don't see. want it to be too creamy. Mm -hmm. Well, risotto, in my books, I like richness. Richness, it means there's a substantialness of slow cooking. But I think by the end, the result is really, it's going to be... Yes, it's a hit or miss. Hit or I miss. know, I know, I know. <laughs> Guys, we're looking for the best dish today. But remember, someone is going home at the end of this cook. So you've had one hour in your cook, you've got 30 minutes to go. 30 minutes left on the clock and it's just so much activity around me. It's very different cooking from home. I just do not want to be going home today. It's too early, like, you know, I have so much to show. I'm most worried that the pasta, which I have to roll really thinly, is going to tear. In which case, uh, I have to start all over again. I see the pork and it's not as tender as I want it to be. At this point, I think I'm going home. <laughs> Hi, I'm Susu Lee. I'm Bruno Mena. I'm Audra Morris, and you're watching MasterChef Asia on Lifetime. Mr. Rico, how are you? You're a bit more relaxed now that you're in your yeah. element, you're cooking? I'm panicking. Because this dish has 15 to 18 ingredients. I'm cooking a paella valenciana. She's cooked by my mom every time there's a special occasion. Wow. So to present the fun memories of my mom to you guys. Yeah. My mom passed away when I was 15 years old. The food that she usually cooked were local and Spanish-inspired dishes. I'm very passionate about food. Three years ago, when I started traveling, I realized that I cannot see myself doing the same thing that I do, which is office work. I see myself making people happy by the food that I serve to them. Uh, I live in a province in one of the islands in the Philippines abundant with uh, seafood. Okay. So I'm incorporating seafood to my paella. So you've got 25 minutes. Yeah. I would get cracking. I'm go. hoping that's going to cook on time. I actually split my lobster bisque into two pans so that it will reduce a lot quicker. And just at the moment when I noticed that the lobster bisque was over-reducing, Bruno and Audra come over and it's like, no, <laughs> like, don't see all my mistakes. Lettuce! Yes, hi. So you split that to go quicker? Yeah, I want to reduce it well on done, two sides. Good. Basically, I'm making a ravioli of prawn and lobster. Okay. It's lobster pieces bound by a prawn puree. Nice. So just prawn and heavy cream, a bit of chives, a bit of lemon juice, salt pepper. Okay. And I'm going to serve that with curry lobster bisque with fresh mango. So it's the combination of the curry, the lobster, and the mango, which I think pairs really well together. The whole idea is to get this pasted down right so it doesn't break. I, I want to roll it as thin as possible, okay. and I'm worried about it breaking. So this is where it could go really wrong. You've got almost just over 20 minutes left. Yeah. The one should be a little bit larger. Yeah, to this is you. the largest I can, I, I punch through, so. Well, I was going to say, why wouldn't you make the bottom piece a little smaller and the top piece a little bigger? Because you've got a lot of filling in there as well, right? Yeah. Yeah, you should adjust, you should adjust that. Immediately, I know that I have to do that because I only have six ravioli skins. I don't have enough time to roll a new set of dough. You should be tasting your food, making sure your flavors are balanced. 
my confidence level went low. I'm taking a high risk and using saffron because I've never used saffron before. Also, start thinking about how you want to play it up. You've only got 15 minutes left. Let's do it! A burblong is a very temperamental sauce. It has to be held within a, a specific window uh, of a temperature, you know, too hot beyond 58 degrees or so, and it will split, you know. You get a mixture of, uh, of butter fat and the oil, and too low, and it solidifies into one solid chunk of butter, and it'd be very hard to bring it up to temperature again and get it emulsified. So I got to worry about all these things at once. The time it's really cracking on. To get that caramelization, I really need the pan to be like cranking hot. But I have trouble with that. I really need to cook my fish now, or else I wouldn't have anything on the plate. I keep trying to put too much meat into the ravioli, and it keeps splitting. So I try it again. Burst again. I got to my last two skins. I'm praying that it was gonna work for me. When you cook a confit, you are actually like poaching um, the chicken inside an oil. The oil has to be a certain temperature. For chicken, you need to be 62 or higher, depending on the thickness of your meat. Hi, Sophia. How are you going? I'm not too happy with that yet. <laughs> okay. I'm going to like tweak it a little bit because yeah. it's a bit too uh, thick. It's not creamy. So I was thinking I'm going to use milk. It looks really gluey. Gluey, and yes. Yeah. Um, sweet mashed potato is just something that uh, my husband loves because he thinks it's healthier. F 15 minutes, you have plenty of time to recover. So you seem to be very, very ready. So think about what is wrong and you can manage that. Yes. First cook of the challenge. Yes. You don't want to go home today. I don't want to go home so today. Cook your best, yeah? Okay. Alright. I go and check my fish skin. It doesn't quite turn out how I expected it. It's a bit more chewy than how I do it at home. Does your pepper work? Can I take it? If you haven't thought about plating, this is the time to do it. Guys, you've got 10 minutes more. This year, uh, sponge doesn't want to come out, so I'm in a bit of a jiffy. I definitely feel the pressure. The sponge isn't to the proper consistency I want. I'm thinking to myself, I should have done this earlier. Ten minutes ago, I'm definitely pushing it. I couldn't find other flour, so I picked the next flour, which is all-purpose flour. The rotis will not be as soft as the atta flour. If I do it wrong, the judges can fly a frisbee with it. I pull the pork out of the mold and it breaks on me. Man, this can't be happening to me right now. You don't want to go home. You want to win that advantage. You've got five minutes to go. Come on. What is that? I'm not too happy with my dish, how it looks. That's not me on the plate. I'm very nervous. I just do not know like whether I'm gonna pull it off or not. Guys, if you need to run, you need to run faster. We have only two minutes to go. Let's go, let's go. Let's go. Kitchen. Someone's going.
going home today. You want to win this. You should have absolutely everything on your plate right now. You've got one minute to go. Sarah, the blue torch. Thirty seconds to go. Come on, guys. Put your foot on the plate. My biggest concern is definitely the sugar that hasn't been caramelized, because I couldn't find the uh, blowtorch, so it could have been better, but, you know, there's nothing to do about it. I really run out of time, so I really have to, like, put on whatever I have. Cross my fingers, I'll be safe. Yeah. I think I could have done better. Initially, I was supposed to do it with this crackling skin. I'm just worried that the texture is a bit monotonous. You know, I don't really know. Today's challenge was all about cooking that one dish that showed us who you are, where you're from, and where you want to take your culinary dream. You had full access to the pantry, you had 90 minutes to cook, and we saw some amazing dishes. You knew that the most impressive dish was going to earn you an advantage in the next challenge. But you also knew that the least impressive dish, sadly, your time in the MasterChef kitchen, will be ending today. We saw some amazing dishes out there and really excited to taste. The first dish we'd like to taste belongs to Ha Thumbs up This time the judges start evaluating our dish Like okay I'll get my head chopped in front of everyone that's going to be nice Tell us what you cook today. I'm cooking uh, chaka hanok, which is grilled white fish on charcoal. It's a typical dish from Hanok, where I came from. It started with a family dish. The family always treat their guests with this dish. Ha, I have to taste the fish skin. My biggest concern is the fish skin. Chewy as hell, and like really, you can strangle somebody with it. Like, blah. okay, here we go. You have to scrape very well the first layer of the skin, like until they almost become transparent. Then you put your silk pad, your paper, brush it with olive oil, and then maybe just a little bit of salt. Let it cook in the oven. That would be the trick. I love the dish. Lot of color. I love the size. You remind me a little bit sushi. I think you did a great job. Thanks for showing us so much of who you are. Thank you, Ha. It's a walk on the cloud. Light, floating. So all of the stress before was kind of like hmm, out of the window. The next dish we'd like to taste belongs to Jess Beer. Even though I've cooked this dish a hundred times, 
I'm worried as to how it's going to represent me. And uh, when you put it there, this is for real, and you are in it, you know. Today, I'm cooking chicken curry with cumin rice and roti. How do you feel about being the potentially the oldest contestant in here? These guys are just like my kids. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want out of this competition? I want a voice. I can help a lot of people in Sarawak. There are a lot of unemployed people. I could teach them to cook and they can start their own businesses if they want to. I think your wisdom came in very handy today because you yes. played on your strengths. Yes. I mean, I see this and I see you and I know who you who are, are and I know, I know what you're about, you know. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm glad you got the roti up. Let's taste. It's something my children, husband and I love to eat. Of, um, I'm actually still salivating. I love it, I love it, I love it. Thank I you. absolutely love it. I mean, this is the sort of food that it's packed full of flavors. There is nothing more to say, you know, it's brilliant. It's Thank a wonderful you. dish and it shows us who you really are. Well done! Thank you. Well done! Thank you. When Audra said, I love it, I love it, I love it, I thought I was in seventh heaven and. Thank you. This for real. Rico. I did my best. I put my heart to it. I hope that my paella has the flavor to get me through to another stage of MasterChef Asia. What have we got here? This is called paella valenciana. It's made of sticky rice, some seafood, shrimps, squid, and mussels. That reminds me of home. That reminds me of my mom especially when she makes that uh, every uh, special occasion. Mm. Well, let's taste your paella. Rico, this paella, you know, your version is Pretty much, you change the rice. There is no arborio, so I, what I did is I use a cannonelli, which is usually used in a risotto. The flavor is there. It's just presentation, and also the technique of understanding how seafood should be cooked. The saffron flavor is really strong. It must have put quite a lot. It's 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 the overriding flavor I get. You know, I'm looking for some depth, like with tomato paste or something like that to, to, to give it a little bit more flavor. Your seafood is really overcooked. Things like um, mussels, prawns, take no time at all to cook. If you want your seafood to be really succulent, right at the end, a wedge of lemon gives it a little bit of acidity. Very cool. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. It frustrates me because that's not me on the plate. I know I can do more. Priya. This is a mango shrikantar with chocolate ganache and fresh berries. The presentation is so beautiful. It looks like a necklace. You know, especially this part, the little dot is beautiful. It really says about your culture. So this is a personal challenge. And I've always wanted to be a MasterChef contestant. I love the flavor. I love the spices. I love the mango, the yogurt, the consistency. I love all that. Thank you. Sandria. This is a classical Thai dish, which is Top Mam Pra with Chinese pickle. This is actually uh, my heritage on the plate. I'm half Thai and half Chinese. I reckon you could have probably gotten a lot stronger with your paste through the fish cake. Okay. 
That's the first challenge. I think I think you did a great job. Thank you. Plus. This is cream patissier and tiny little raspberry and blackberries. That's how I eat at home. Mm. Oh, Susu, you're making a mess. When it's good, I don't care. Oh. I only have one problem with it. I can't really lick the chocolate off the plate. I kind of really wanted that chocolate. Thank you. Alice. It's called Chinese treasure steamed dumplings. But let's let's try this. The dough is a little bit thick. I think it's actually undercooked, your dough. Alice, you could have just done it in a very traditional way. Mm -hmm. Put your batter in your pan, put your raw dumpling on the top, and just put some oil, some water, and just let it cook it down until it fries the batter. Thank you for the tips. Thank you, Alice. I do believe I can serve something better. So in the next challenge, I will do my best. The next dish we'd like to taste belongs to... Sophia. It's just so upsetting. Mm. This makes me feel like, oh, that's not me, and this whole, the whole world is going to see that dish. This is chicken confit. See, it's pesto sauce. I have a little bit of crispy chicken skin on top of it, which I crumbled it, and a sweet mashed potato. Let's try it. I love your chicken crackling. Thank you very much. Very, very tasty. Confit of chicken, uh, that's, a, that's a very technical dish to make. You can see it. Um, to me, the, the chicken's overcooked. To confit, you know, you need to not overcook because you need to keep that moist. My advice to you, I would slice the bird so you can taste it a little bit softer. I think in MasterChef, yes. I was hoping you'd do a little more. I mean, essentially try and create something a little bit more sophisticated. I mean, this could be Friday night dinner, you don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure where you're going to stand today. Thank you so much, Sophia. Thank you, chefs. Stefan, please come forward. This is a southern fried pork chop with kimchi slaw and garlic cilantro cream. I grew up in Indonesia and I went to school in the US. Everything is really a lot of fried food, a lot of very rich uh, southern home cooking. Is the pork chop cooked through? I hope so. Maybe a little bit. Is the pork chop cooked through? I hope so. Maybe a little bit overcooked, Stefan. Okay. I love the really bold flavors you're going for. It really shows your personality. <laughs> For me, there's so much on the plate. I think sometimes, pull back. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to pull back. Again, less is sometimes more. Thank you, Stefan. Jack, please, we would like to test your plate now. Thank you. I'm definitely scared. What your dish is all about? This is pulled pork with crispy skin and a roasted bell pepper sauce with some green beans. So explain to me what represents you the most. The style of plating is really where I want to be. Like neat, 
and I really like the sauce is something I think close to me, fresh flavors, really bright. So your sauce, what? tell me, the sauce, you have, you have capsicum, I, re I remember, yeah. you grill the capsicum. Mm -hmm. That's a roasted red bell pepper sauce, with, so it has onion, some sherry vinegar, some paprika, so it should provide a smoky contrast to the pork. Let's taste it and see what it really tastes like. Absolutely. Yeah? I love the sauce. I like that smokiness and also that chart. But it needs a little bit more salt and a little more vinegar. Because you know pork is a very fatty protein, no matter how you cook it. But I find it it's so dry. You need more sauces. Mm -hmm. And the time, what about the liquid that you have in the pot that you're braising or you are cooking in that pressure cooker? You could have reduced it down and make a very soft little bit of juice on the bottom, I think that would really get everything together. Yeah. Vegetable, I, think, I don't think the green beans is really fit into this uh, dish at all. So you, we need you to be a little bit more refined. When you're cooking it, think of how you want us to enjoy it. I was kind of hoping for some, a really good, good chunk of pork here. More and, rustic, and then, right? Yeah, and then, you know, just, I just want my mouth yeah. to, like, water, and I want to get in there and start pulling it apart. I would even eat with my hands, you know. Mm -hmm. Come up with something that would just blow our minds away, right? Thank you very much, Jack. Thank you very much. Feeling horrible. I know what needs to be improved, but at this point, it may be too late for me. Bonnie. The dish is a traditional rendang with turmeric rice. I find it a little bit sweet with this rendang, but I understand Balinese food have a very sweety flavor. And they always use a lot of palm sugar, brown sugar and cook with. You grab the wrong herb. That's oregano which is Italian. You should have gone for like a coriander. I agree with you on the herbs, but this is my type of flavor. I love your dish. I am in Asia, and it's what it's all about today. Thank you. <laughs> Young. You have crispy snapper, lemongrass, beurre blanc, nori jam. Are you happy with the beurre blanc? Um, do you yes. have any issue? The, it seems that it split a little bit. Uh, yes, it did split a little bit. You see? What we see here, when we're talking about splitting, Come it, look. is that the butter and your sauce is completely separated here. So you can see what we call petit beurre. You know, that's the oil of the butter that split with the sauce and it should be uniform. And you can see exactly here on the spoon that you have those small oil parcel here. It's supposed not to be like that, but just even. Mm. Emulsified, truly. Yeah. Emulsified, absolutely. All right. Let's, Let's try, try it. it. You can see that the skin is not crispy the way you want it. But seriously, I love your dish. I love this iod flavor. It gives a very nice kick. It matches perfectly well with your fish. I love the crunchiness of the lettuce. I like the combination of the flavor. I, I do love it very much. If you keep cooking like this, we got to have some serious master chef Asia here. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. It's not the perfect dish, but it's okay. We'll just take it one challenge at a time. Lika! I don't know if we've ever had anyone in any of the MasterChef series who've actually done a spot-on risotto. So what's it called? The death dish, right? 
You reckon this is going to be... High risk. It's Extremely very high, high risk. risk. Go big or go home. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's try this. The umami is very strong. It's very sweet. I like the, uh, the uni. But you are using milk. I don't understand why using milk in the risotto. I wanted it creamy and cream. rich. Cream. It means you need cream. Yeah. And, ri and, and rich. I think cream would really make that dish much richer. I've never had risotto cooked this way before, but I'm not sure if it quite works for me. It's a little Something bit one-dimensional. Something kicking, you know. Yeah. Your uh, enoki is very crispy. Well done. Thank you. Very well done. Thanks, Lika. Marcus, come show us what you've got. In 90 minutes, I'm trying to attempt at least 12 elements, but I knew that was impossible. I couldn't find a calamansi in the pantry earlier until the end. I'm still going to take some calamansi to the judges. I'm going to give them some theater. Just hope that it works. Well, now a bit of theater. I like that. My take on chocolate and a citrus dessert. So I like the zing on citrus with the sweetness and richness of the chocolate. Before you begin, take the little calamansi, rub it in your hands, fill your nostrils up with the flavors on calamansi. And... Marcus, what is your journey about this dish? I'm really much, pretty much a dessert person. And once in a while, I make birthday cakes for friends. So this is actually a version of a cake that I always make. Let's, Let's try it. It's a fun dessert, so mix and match however you want. All right, Marcus, you have too many things into your plate. Mm -hmm. You have 90 minutes, so you have to make sure that you can do something who represents you into this one dish. If it's the one who represents you, it's too many, it's too much. Marcus, too many things, so disconnected. Everything has lots of ingredients, but it's still kind of that really flat tasting. And you're getting lost in the end. You're getting lost. Totally getting lost. I'm coming from family of very famous pastry chef in France. So I know exactly what you try to achieve here. Modern techniques, and especially with this uh, sponge cake, with the espuma cooking in the microwave, that's what you try to do? Yes, I did. Yeah. This is supposed to be very, like a cloud. It's supposed to be very, very light. And you have a reason why is not the texture is supposed to be or not. Well, ideally, uh, this is the sort of dessert you serve immediately. I can guarantee you. Okay. I can guarantee you. I can make you one. We're going to stay very, very light. I'd like to see that. This man has three Michelin stars. And when he tells you that it hasn't been done right, Time to listen, yeah? Definitely. Humility will take you a long way in this competition. And sometimes, strip it back a little bit, because we want to see insides of Marcus. We want to see what Marcus is really about, yeah? So cook from Come here. from here. Yeah. You cook from here. Absolutely. From the hall. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for the advice. If they didn't like my dish, it's okay. That just gives me a chance to one day come up with a really good dish and just blow them away. The next dish we would like to test today will be Lenard, please. I'm very, very nervous, but I'm trying not to show it. And I just pray for the best. Hope that they get the vision behind the dish. I've made a lobster and shrimp raviolo. 
served with a curried lobster bisque, fresh mango, and uh, a bit of garnishing of uh, herbs and salmon roll. I've done everything that can be done. The outcome of my dish is completely out of my hands. So, what, did you have any challenge here cooking this? I mean, I had a, a bit of trouble with the ravioli actually because I was trying to roll it as thin as possible and it kept breaking. Um, so, I had to keep decreasing the amount of filling until I got it perfect. And I actually just made it with my last two pieces of uh, ravioli <laughs> skin. So, thank goodness for that. But you took our advice, you know, you played around with it and yeah. until it fit. Mm -hmm. I particularly love the fact that you've combined a bisque with a little bit of curry in there. I'm, I'm really looking forward to trying this. I think it represents me because I like to combine flavors and techniques. So you have raviolo, which is Italian, and you also have mango and curry, which is uh, Asian. Lennon, in terms of the lobster size, I love it, the texture. Thank you, Jean. You know, it just perfectly bind together, not too many shrimp mousse, and the style of this dish, it is about the lobster. This, did you put any cream inside? I did finish with a little bit of cream at the end. And when it was a bit too rich, I added a squeeze of lemon as well. Right. Yeah. I think, you know, cream would be, just need a little bit more. Okay. Curry, cream, a little more butter, just kind of that French, uh, Southeast Asian yep. you're going for. Yeah. I think that would be much more elevated with your dream, what you want to do yeah. today. But because your base is very good, I can guarantee you the base is very good. You have a strong flavor of uh, crustacean, of lobster. I think it's a fantastic dish. This is the kind of dish who make me exciting about Master Chef Asia. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chef. I quit my job as an engineer to be on the competition. I just wanted to put the best food out there. And uh, I'm so glad that the judges liked it. Guys, we've seen some amazing dishes today, which we're really excited about. But sadly, we also saw some dishes that didn't quite hit the mark. So we're going to have to go back and deliberate who we're sending home today. Today, we wanted you to cook a dish that showed us who you are. You had 90 minutes, full access to the pantry, cook your heart out. One of you is about to win an advantage in the next challenge. For one of you, this was your first and last challenge in MasterChef Asia. Let's start with the good news. We saw some amazing dishes today that were clearly a step above everyone else. There are three dishes clearly in line with winning that advantage in the next challenge. If I call your name, please step forward. Jess Beer. The first name they call out is mine. Did I hear it right? Did they just call my name? I hear everyone else clapping. It's me! <laughs> Probably the hands are still shaking from all the excitement. Yeah. Ooh, yes. <laughs> Proud for my country. Huh? Wow, I feel pretty shy. I don't want to, you know, come in front of people. Mm -mm. But it feels good. Finally, someone from right here in Singapore. My heart is pounding. I'm not very confident because Leong put up an incredible dish. I really want my dish to be the top three. Leonard. I'm incredibly happy. I'm so flattered that I got into the top three. 
Just beer. We love the way you present your dish. It sticks exactly to the challenge of the day to day. We love the story behind. It's exactly what reflects who you are in the plate. We love the flavor. We love everything in the dish. Thank you. Ha. Huh? We really love your way you cook today. It was absolutely beautiful. Flavor was here that reflects exactly who you are. Absolutely outstanding. Having somebody with three Michelin stars say that he liked my dish, I didn't expect this, seriously. Lena, we really love how you completely used those 90 minutes to do a perfect dish. That's the reason why you win the dish of the day. <laughs> well done. Well done. <laughs> Winning the best dish, it, the whole thing is surreal. I started cooking purely out of passion. I started an Instagram page about two, two years ago because I wanted to showcase some of the dishes that I cook at home. I've been thinking about going to food um, for the last few years. I thought this would be the perfect opportunity. And uh, to represent Singapore is, uh, is a dream come true. Congratulations, you win the advantage to the next challenge. And now for the news that nobody wants. Someone's going home. If I call your name, please step forward. Sophia? Jake? Rico. I'm afraid the three of you sadly had the least impressive dishes today. Rico, we talked about your seafood. It was overcooked. I am so nervous because my paella is a disaster. There's a big possibility that I will be going home tonight. We felt you promised us a paella, but didn't quite deliver on it. But you did give us a complete dish. And with a little bit more care, it could have been really delicious. And that's why you're safe today. Please step back. I'm so sure that I'll be going home, but the judges gave me another chance. Sophia, your dish lacked clarity, didn't really have much of a concept, and the hero of the dish was the chicken. But unfortunately, it was dry and totally overcooked. Jake, your dish lacked a lot of seasoning and balance. We weren't sure why those three little beans were on the plate. Being in the bottom three is definitely crushing to me. To be here in MasterChef Asia, I quit my job in the bank. It's a horrible feeling to give your whole heart out and for it not to be enough. But. Your charred red pepper sauce. We loved it. And that's why you're safe. I can't believe it. I'm not going home today. Somehow, some way, I dodged the bullet. Unfortunately, Sophia, <laughs> that means you're going home today. You go home to your family, your husband and your daughter. I'm sure they'll be waiting there 
to give you massive hugs and stuff. I just can't wait to go back and just hug those two. I've been taking them for granted. They truly do miss them. I just want to go home and just hug them and just give them a big hug and a sloppy kiss <laughs> to both of them. <laughs> Sophia, keep on that dream and do not leave it. Sophia, it's time to leave the Master Chef kitchen. All right. See ya. Bye. <laughs> I really hope that I can grasp as much as information and heaps and learn from my mistakes and yeah, bring myself, myself to the next level as a cook. This is the first elimination and it's not an easy thing to go through. You four team are still here. You are one step closer to winning that MasterChef title. So go home, regroup, get ready for the next challenge. See you then. Next time on MasterChef Asia, the stakes are raised at Singapore's famous flyer. This is your first team challenge. The pressure is intense. Sandra, watch the pineapples. It's starting to burn. <gasps> you don't want to be in that losing team. Oh, my God. And emotions run high. I want us to be part of the top three every time, okay? I'm going to fail. I see stars. Who will step up? No food, no vote. And who will be sent packing? If my team loses, any, anyone should go home, it should be me.